Hello friends, welcome back and good to see you. This is Govind here. As I mentioned in my YouTube community post that I have started trading in the Forex market and I plan to make series of YouTube videos to share with you the Forex market related information right from the fundamentals to the sum of the profitable trading strategies. In this first video, I am going to cover the fundamentals of the Forex market which is very important even if before you start thinking or deploying the strategies in the Forex market. There are good number of topics to cover in this video right from what is a currency, what is a currency pair and how this pair moves, who are the players in the Forex market and what are the fundamental factors that affect the Forex market. The Forex market structure itself for example, the lot size, the series, contract size, expiration, margin, etc. And also what are the fundamental factors that affect the Forex market. And in the end, I will also cover the comparison between the Forex FNO market and the equity FNO market. So I recommend you to watch this video till the end to get a good idea of the Forex market. Let us quickly understand the evolution of the currency. In the olden days, people used to exchange a goods versus another goods or a goods versus a service. For example, X kg of wheat would be exchanged with Y kg of rice. So that system is nothing but the barter system. Later on, the gold became the standard means of exchange between people. As and when the evolution took place, different countries got formed and money became the means of exchange for any value such as goods, products or services within the country as well as outside the country. So this money which is specific to the particular country is nothing but the currency. For example, we have a Indian rupee for India and for US it is the US dollar. So all of us we use Indian rupee as a means of exchange within the country and if we have to exchange any goods or services with another country we will have to have a exchange of these two currencies for a particular value. For example Indian rupee would be exchanged with the US dollars if we have to do any trade or buy or sell between two countries. The major players in the currency are the FX market or the banks, corporations who does the importing and exporting hedge funds and the retail people. The banks are the major players because they act as a medium for others to buy and sell any particular currencies or to exchange the one currencies against the other currency. For example, the major importer like Indian Oil Corporation in India who imports lot of oil has to pay using the dollar currency because the dollar is the more accepted currency across the world, they have to go to a bank and buy the dollars that are required to import the oil by paying the equivalent amount in the Indian rupees. So they exchange the dollars by paying the Indian rupees so that they can source the crude oil to India. And exporters, for example, IT companies, TCS, Infosys, Wipro, HCL Technology, they provide their services or the technology, they export their services or technology and they get paid in dollars for the services that are given outside of India. And to meet their expenses in India for the employees, infrastructure, etc., they need to convert that dollar that they have received into Indian rupees. So, of course, they go to bank to convert the dollar into Indian rupees. So that is how they get involved. And of course the hedge funds, they do get involved and the retail people like us, whenever we want to travel to Europe or US, we need a currency of that particular country and we go to a bank or any exchange to exchange a dollar or euro by paying in Indian rupees. And also, for example, if you want to send somebody to or your son or daughter to other countries for education, then you need a dollars. At that time, you go to a bank and then you exchange Indian rupees with dollars to meet the education expenses. So that is how all these parties get involved in the foreign exchange or the currency exchange. Note that the currencies are being traded. So that means they are 
bought or sold based on their relative value for example if you have to buy one us dollar you have to pay 82 rupees which is the uh, current market value similarly you have to pay x amount of inr against buying a one euro and if you notice the currencies are being traded always in pairs usd against inr euro against inr jpy that is japanese n against INR. So you, there can be different pairs, but they are always traded in pairs, which is important to note. In Forex trading or currency trading, there is an important concept that we need to understand, which is the base currency and the quote currency. So let me take an example, base and a quote currency. We know that uh, we always need two currency pairs for trading. So let me take USD as the base currency and INR as the port currency. Currently, it is trading at 82 rupees. Okay. So what does it mean? It means that one unit of base currency is equal to 82 units of court currency. So if you have to buy one unit of US dollar, you will have to pay 82 units of Indian rupees. So like this, there can be different pairs with the different base and court currencies. This is very important to understand. So USD INR is one pair where USD is the base currency and INR is the quote currency. Similarly, we have Euro, EUR and INR. So here the, these two pairs, Euro INR, Euro is the base currency and INR is the quote currency. We will come to different pairs you know, moments from now. Let us understand how a particular currency pair value goes up or down. Let me take an example of USD INR pair. USD is a base currency and INR is a quote currency, which is quoted at the market value is at 82. So when do you think this 82 will go up? It can go up when the value of USD, the US dollar in the market becomes stronger. It also means when the value of Indian rupee becomes weaker against US dollar, this quote value will go up probably from 82 to 82.1 or 2. So when do you think the value will go down? Value will go down when US dollar becomes weaker against INR. That also means INR becoming stronger against US dollar. So that is how we have to interpret. There are of course various factors that influence for a particular currency to be a weaker or stronger against other currency which we will discuss a moments from now. Let us look at the global effects or the currency market. There are different ways you can trade the currencies. There is a OTC over the counter market. You can go to any of the banks or foreign currency exchange units for exchanging one currency against other currency. And you also have swaps and forwards. Swaps are nothing but you can swap any of your business or goods against a particular currency. This happens between a specific party. Forwards are nothing but the futures. The only difference between forwards and futures is that in forwards, the contract size and the expiration period is tailored and agreed between two specific parties. But whereas in futures, the contract size and the expiration period is fixed and it is handled by the exchanges. And other way to trade in currencies is using the exchanges across the world. Every country has their own exchanges. You can use those exchanges to trade the currency pairs. And if you look at it, the currencies are being traded 24 hours and 5 days. That is because if somebody is sleeping, somebody is awake. For example, if India is trading from 9 to 5, after 5, somewhere around the world, INR is being traded against some other currency. So that is how the Forex market is always alive during the weekdays. That's why we call it as 24 by 5 days a week. Currencies are active and the value keeps changing based on what is happening across the world. And it is estimated that $7.5 trillion daily turnover in the Forex market. It's quite huge. And most traded currency pairs in the world are Euro, 
USD, Pound, Japanese Yen, Australian Dollar, Canadian Dollar and Swiss Franc. These are the most traded currencies across the world and they are also called as the majors. So here is the uh, turnover share of the different currency pairs across the world. The highest is the Euro USD which contributes 24% of the turnover and next one is the USD, JPY, so on and so forth. And if you look at uh, USD INR which is contributing 1.7% of the FX daily turnover share. And this data is from Bank for International Settlement Survey which they did it on April 2009. As a retail trader, we are more interested in knowing uh, how the currency pairs are being traded in the exchanges. Let us now understand the exchange traded currency derivative market structure in India. We have mainly three exchanges, the NSE, BSC and MSEI Metropolitan Stock Exchange of India. The highest liquidity is available in National Stock Exchange, NSE. You can use this exchange to trade in currencies. The INR pairs that are supported, that are allowed to trade in these exchanges are four of them, USD INR, GBP INR, Euro INR and JPY INR. And the cross currency pairs that are supported are Euro USD, GBP USD, USD JPY. Liquidity wise, we have the highest liquidity in the USD INR pair. You can use this pair to trade in currencies. In the cross currencies, there is a less liquidity. I suggest to avoid it in the beginning at least and focus on the USD INR in the NSC exchange if you want to trade in currencies. And we have both futures as well as options being supported in these exchanges. And we also have weekly and monthly series for both futures and options. Note that the futures are available for weekly series also in currencies. Unlike in equity market, we do not have weekly futures available in equity market. So what I mean is we do not have weekly uh, nifty future or bank nifty future. Here in currencies, we do have weekly futures as well as weekly options along with the separate monthly series. And future contracts are available up to 12 months. This is allowed because people may be interested to, interested to hedge against their currencies. They can use the futures of 3 months, 6 months, 12 months. And we have weekly FNO, the expiry that happens on every Friday. Every Friday, there is a weekly expiry. And monthly expiry happens on two working days before the last business day of the month. This series is different from the weekly series here. It's not combined together. So there is a separate monthly expiry series and there is a separate weekly expiry series which happens on every Friday. And expiry is at 12.30 p.m. And mode of settlement is always in cash. All the contracts, FNO contracts are settled in cash in Indian rupees. And what is the reference rate that is being used for settling these contracts? That is the rate that is announced by the RBI which happens around 1 pm. Friends, please note that the expiry happens at 12.30 pm but the RBI reference rate which is used for calculating the contract settlement gets announced at 1 pm. So here it is slightly different than in equity market. Okay. So you may ask why this phenomenon of RBI announcing a reference rate at 1 pm? Why not the closing price of the future? It is because if you notice the currency pairs are getting traded in different places, in banks, by exporters, by importers, by retailers, over the counter, etc. So how do you know at what value it is being exchanged? So that is why what RBI does is RBI collects data points from major banks at different intervals and then they arrive at a particular value for that particular currency pair which is referred as a reference value. So that is what is being used for contract settlement. This is unlike what happens in the equity market where wherever the stock or the index gets closed at the end of the exchange time, normally at 3.30, that becomes the reference rate. <clears throat> that is because all the 
shares or the stocks are getting traded at one central point that is exchange here in case of currency pairs the currency pairs are getting traded in different places by different parties so that is why rbi and the government controls the reference rate like this coming to the tick size the minimum move that is allowed in the price quotation is nothing but the tick tick size which is 0 0.0025 so it is it is 0.25 paisa lot size is 1000 except for the jpy pair so if you are trading one lot you are actually trading 1000 quantities Please remember this if you are trading one lot you are always trading thousand quantities except for the jpy pair <clears throat> so the how do you ca calculate the contract size then the contract size value is calculated one lot that is thousand units and the currency pair price so if you take for example usd inr which is let's say quoting at 82 what is the contract size contract size is thousand units into 82 so 82 thousand is the contract value here okay and the margin is around 2 to 3 percent of the contract value based on the different currency pairs so if you take usd inr one lot if you are trading the contract size is 82000 and the margin is 2 percent of the 82000 which is around 1600 rupees so that is what is the margin that you need to trade one lot of usd inr coming to the circuit normally it is expected that any of these currencies gets traded within the band of plus or minus two percent if it goes beyond three percent for the contracts less than six months or five percent for the contracts more than six months then there will be circuits normally this situation doesn't happen unlike in equity market you won't see any big gap up or gap down of 2% or 3% in the currency market. Coming to the fundamental factors that impacts the currency valuation, as I mentioned, currency trading is mainly based on the view of the relative value of the currencies that are being exchanged. So the factors that impact the valuation of the particular currency is the GDP of that particular country. If the GDP is better, that means the economy is doing better and that particular country's currency becomes more stronger. Next one is the import export. How much of import and export is happening between two currencies or the countries also impacts the currency valuation. Next one is the inflation. So higher the inflation, what it means is the value of the currency is going down. Lower the inflation, value of the currency is stable or stronger so that is how we have to interpret so so the inflation is again derived from the cpi data so all these data points do impact the valuation of the currency next one is the interest rates so the interest rate definitely impacts the valuation and the interest rate difference between the two currency pairs or the two countries also impacts the valuation of the currencies next one is the trade deficit impacts the currency valuation and non-form payroll this is nothing but the employment data that is being announced by uh, us government on monthly basis so this defines again how many people are uh, employed how many are unemployed etc defines the strength of the economy which in turn defines the valuation of the currency and the central bank's actions and decisions also impact the valuation of the currency see the monetary policy meetings where they decide the interest rates repo rates etc also impacts the movement of the currency pairs and sometimes the central banks like rbi do intervene when their when the particular when their particular currency value is going down so they may want to control the devaluation of the currency by intervening in the currency market to make the currency valuation stable so normally rbi does the intervention whenever it is necessary which impacts the currency valuation so friends if you are trading in the currency market or the forex market do pay attention to the important data announcements such as gdp employment data cpi data interest rate monetary policies both from 
US as well as from India, which will help you to understand how it is going to impact the particular currency pairs. Let us now compare the FX market and the equity market. In case of currency, the as I mentioned, currencies are bought and sold based on the relative value of the currency pairs. Whereas stocks or the shares of a particular company are purchased and sold in the stock market based on the individual company perceived market value. And in case of currency, the fundamentals are based on the country's economy, nothing to do with the individual company. It is solely based on the country's economy. But whereas in case of stock market, it is solely based on the company's performance. And it is possible that individual stocks or the companies can heavily underperform. Volatility is less in case of currency market compared to the stock market. Stock markets are highly volatile. They can gap up, gap down 2%, 3%. All this is possible in the equity derivative or equity markets. But whereas in currency, normally such scenarios won't happen. The speculation is less in the currency market, but whereas in the stock market, it's very highly speculative. People do speculate and in fact, people make money out of this speculation. Currency markets are less prone to the black swan events, whereas equity markets are more prone to the black swan events. The reason is, Currency are mainly based on the economy of the entire country. So what happens is if the country's economy is doing not well, the particular currency pay, pair might slowly get impacted. But in general, you will know when the currency is getting impacted due to the country's economy. It won't happen overnight like in a stock market if there is a war that is getting announced or if there is a pandemic suddenly there is a impact that is shown on the equity market but that is not the case in case of currency if it has to happen it will slowly happen you will come to know and the circuit break is three to five percent in currency and in case of equity market it is ten percent fifteen percent and twenty percent so if you look at all of this it is really worth understanding the currency market and also participate in the currency trading so what is that we can do with the currency market in india definitely we can uh, hedge against uh, if you're doing import or export and also you can hedge against any of your family abroad expenses for education, health and travel. It definitely makes sense to understand the currency market at least for the hedging purpose of your personal expenses abroad. And the next area that we can do is the currency trading using the FNO strategies. Considering the low volatility, low margin, definitely there are possibilities to trade in the currency market. In my upcoming videos, I am going to share some of the strategies that can be used in the currency market, especially using USD INR. Friends, I hope you learned something out of this video. If so, do press the like button and also subscribe to this channel if you have not yet for the contents like this. Keep sharing the video. Thank you for your time. See you soon.